Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Coffee here, and today we're back with a whip and chat. Whip stands for work in progress. So get out whatever that is for you. Work along with me as I tell you some stories from the coffee house shenanigans. Now, I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday weekend here in the U.S. I believe all over, but here in the U.S. that I know of, um, it was Easter. So hopefully you guys had a wonderful, safe holiday with your families. Now, here at the coffee house, we don't typically celebrate Easter too much. And I'm going to explain that here in a few minutes. We did do a little bit of celebrating, but again, we'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. If you can't tell, I'm a little tired today. Um, I was going to cancel the whip and chat, but I was like, I have so much stuff to tell you guys, and I'm not feeling very creative at the moment, but that's okay, because I pulled out this. It should be a little bit mindless for me, so we're going to like cross-stitch today, so hopefully you'll pull out whatever you're working on and work with me. So this cross-stitch is called Love My Bear, I believe it's called, from Oraloa. It is a stamped cross stitch. Now, stamped stands for, uh, is for uh, when the pattern is stamped onto the fabric, making it easier for you so you don't have to count. And um, it's great for beginners or even intermediate and not uh, in like expert people if you just like having something that you don't have to worry about counting too much for cross stitch. Uh, stamped cross stitch is a great way to be able to try out the craft without having to do all the like hard counting. So <laughs> I love me some stamped cross stitch. Um, I haven't been able to do it in a while though. So like it's nice to be able to work on this today. Um, so yeah. So where do I even begin, Lord? Um, let's start one. Where have I been? Because I've been kind of shifty lately. Now, typically I'm very much on my A game when it comes to videos and stuff. And as of late... I feel like, let me tighten this up a little bit because it's moving too much for me. As of late, I don't feel like I've been on my A game with my videos. And it's mostly because I haven't really been into crafting too much lately. As of late, I haven't really been feeling like doing a whole lot of anything because I've been so tired. Um, it's not just burnout. It's There's a lot going on in the coffee house. Um, so we're going to talk about that today. Um, but let's start off with last week. So last week, we were supposed to take the kids to the dentist. So the kids have their six-month cleaning at the dentist last Tuesday, and we ended up having to miss the appointment. So I have to go today for their, their cleaning, which was another reason I was going to cancel for today was because I knew that the kids, uh had their dentist appointment. So I'm trying not to get into anything that's going to be too like uh, time consuming because I know here in a little bit, I'm going to have to get up and get cleaned up and get dressed and get, go grab them from school and take them to the dentist. Well, last week I called myself being super productive. I had cleaned up the house, got myself showered and cleaned up, go to walk out the house and Maggie calls because she knew she had the dentist appointment and she has a couple of like teeth that are really, really bothering her. And so she was like, mom, are you coming to pick us up? And I'm like, Maggie, I'm literally in the garage. It baffles me that this child remembers my cell phone number because half the time I don't remember it. But she calls me from school and she's like, are you coming to pick us up? And I'm like, Maggie, I literally got into the garage. <laughs> literally got into the garage. You can't remember to clean up your room, but somehow you remember my cell phone number. Okay. So I'm like, mommy is on her way. Just hang tight. So I, I make the drive to Maggie's school. And I pick her up. Now, Orion's school is literally right across the street from Maggie's school. So it makes it super convenient when picking them up. So I was like, well, let's go get your brother. So we drive the two seconds to Orion's school. I get out of the car and she goes, mom, can I come with you? Now, typically she just stays in the car because it's like two seconds to go in, have him come out of class, sign him out and then leave. But something was like, just let her come in. It's only going to be a few minutes. So I was like, yeah, sure. You can come in with me. So she grabbed, she grabbed her, her, her whatever, and then she gets out of the car. She had, like, this, like, little slimy, weird toy she was playing with. She grabs it, gets out of the car. I leave the car running because I'm thinking, well, I'm going to be a few minutes, so it's not going to be a big deal. And we get into, we go to this, the door of the school. As I'm going to the door, there's a lady there with a stack of papers in her hand, and I assumed that she was a teacher because, you know, why else would she be just standing there with a stack of papers in her hand? And she's like, where are you going? Just like that. Just where are you going? Excuse me? Um, hello? I'm going to pick up my kid. And I kind of like push by her a little bit because I'm like, why are you questioning what am I doing at the school? Like, 
what is like what somebody got a stick up their butt today. So I walk into the school and I'm stopped by somebody and they're like, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? I'm like, did I walk into the wrong building? Last time I checked, this is my child's school. Why wouldn't I be here? And they're like, what's your, what's your reasoning for being here? I'm like, to pick up my kid because they have a dentist appointment? And they're like, no, you have to stay in here now. I'm sorry, is, this, is the school under siege? Like, what is happening? And the lady comes back that's holding the papers that stopped me at the door. And she goes, we're under lockdown. Get in this room. Wait, wait, what? Wait, 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 hold up. So they just kind of shove me into this room and I'm like, um, hello? And then they take and put, bring some other lady in there who I find out later is like the principal of another school around here. And so they push me into this room and I'm like, what is going on? And they're like, we're in a lockdown. So no one leaves or comes into the school until the school is cleared. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. So like a few minutes, cause like they had like people all going and doing whatever. So I just assumed that it was only going to take a few minutes. Y'all, we get there at 1245. We did not leave until 325. I am sitting there like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. Their dentist appointment was at one o'clock. So, of course, I call the dentist's office and I'm like, hey, f friends, um, I don't think I'm going to make it. And this is around like 1250-ish. I call to let them know that, you know, we're not going to make the appointments because they have us locked in the school because the school is on lockdown because they had a threat. Now, we, North Dakota is one of the few places in the U.S., knock on wood, that has never had a school shooting, right? They get threats often, but they're very vigilant as soon as they get a threat to investigate, find out where it came from, and handle the situation. So thankfully, we've never had a school shooting in North Dakota. But someone had called in a threat to the school and because of this, and it was in the short period of time it took for me to grab Maggie out of her school, because when, when, when Orion school shuts down, so does Maggie's, because they're such close proximity to each other, they both will shut down. They must have just shut down right as we left, because the way I was able to grab Maggie, no problem, and then two seconds later, I'm locked in a room. Now, this room had no windows, one door. It looked like somebody's office, and I'm like, hello? Um, okay, so I'm locked in a room with a lady I don't know, and she's chatting me up, and I'm thinking that they put her in there to keep me from, like, wigging out because I was about to snap, okay? Because you just locked me in a room with my kid, and I don't know how long I'm going to be in here, and I have appointments, Needless to say, and it wasn't the only appointment I had that day. It was a very busy day that day um, because not only did I have their dental appointment at one, at three o'clock we had the cable guy coming to install the new cable box or the new internet box. Then to leave uh, from home after the cable got installed to, well, not the cable, but the internet box. Um, then I would have to run over to the school and have the parent teacher conferences with Maggie's teachers and then Orion's teachers. Orion has four teachers. Maggie has two teachers. That's six teachers I had to go meet with. But after that day, I was like, nah, homie, Mr. Coffee, get off work. I'm not, I, I can't do this today. Mentally, I cannot do this. It's a lot. So they have us locked in there. School finally, before school ends, I'm like, is there any way one of y'all can go out to my vehicle and turn it off. And they're like, what do you mean? What, what did I just say? Can you, can you go out? Can you walk outside? And there is a Jeep sitting in front of your school right now that has been running for over an hour. To keep someone from trying to attempt to steal it, could you, could you, would you mind turning it off? And they're like, we can't do that. Okay. All right, so I messaged Mr. Coffee and I'm like, hey, look, are you busy at work today? And he's like, no, why? And I was like, because I am locked in the school. And he goes, well, leave. I can't. I'm like, I've tried, and I did. I tried just saying, fine, I'll wait outside. But they wouldn't let me leave after I had entered the building. So they, they kept me in there. 
And so I was like, I've tried to leave. They won't let me. I need you to come here and turn my car off. And he's like, now take it. It had been like an hour and a half that we were locked in this room. I'm irritated as all get out. And he's like, wait, why don't you just use the app? The, I'm sorry, the what? He goes, the app for the Jeep. Why don't you just turn it off that way? Y'all. Who child, I was born in a different time, in a time where vehicles didn't have applications that you can turn your vehicle off and on from. Apparently the app for my vehicle that I installed and never looked at <laughs> has a power on and off switch for my car. I did not know this. Why? Because I don't think of the app when I get into my vehicle. I just kind of get in there. So the fact that there's a whole app to turn my car off and on from my cell phone, I was like, wait, what? I have been fussing about my car for 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get it to turn off. And I can't see because even though it's sitting right outside the room we were in, there was no windows. OK, luckily, I'm not claustrophobic or anything. So sitting there was like not an issue. It was mostly the fact that they had me locked in there with Maggie and they were trying to stay as calm as possible to not freak out Maggie, of course. And so I, where I appreciate that, um, I would have appreciated one being told what was happening or them just saying, look, you can't come in. We're under we're under lockdown. Maybe five or ten minutes after I joined, like got into the school is when I got the email saying that the school had been locked down. I was like, oh, well, that's convenient. Literally. If I would have, if it would have taken me longer to get to Orion School, I would have never been able to even one get into the school, and two been locked in that room. So it's just like, oh Lord, oh boy. Um, okay. So Mr. Coffee ends up getting off work early, anyways, because I tell him I'm gonna need his help when it comes time for the parent teacher conferences. When it comes time for the parent teacher conferences, I let Mr. Coffee handle Orion's and then I handle Maggie's because Maggie has the special ed stuff and Orion has the smart kid stuff that makes no sense to my little tiny smooth brain. So I let him deal with that. So they finally let us let us out. Mr. Coffee's outside waiting for us and he goes, yeah, the car was just running and it's hot as all get out in there. I had the heater on because um it was it's still cold here it's still cold it's supposed to be warming up this week which has me afraid because again when it warms up in north dakota that typically means snow so i was like uh great awesome y'all it was like a freaking sauna in there the way we had to put down all of the windows just to be able to stand to be in there for more than 10 minutes so we get home not shortly after we got home we were home maybe two minutes the cable guy gets there and he's like, hey, I'm supposed to take a look at your internet box because there's something going on with it. I'm like, yeah, it keeps dropping signal for no reason. Like there's nothing happening and it just keeps dropping signal. Now, these people come in every year at the same time each year and tell me that my my modem for my cable or for my internet is old. And I'm like, OK, and they're like, it needs to be replaced. So he went around and replaced the internet boxes that we had in the house. So he, he's replacing the internet boxes and he's asking questions like, you know, where are the boxes located and all this other stuff. So he's looking at them and he goes, yeah, these are old. I'm like, that's what they all say every time they come in here. I'm like, I'm not paying for extra boxes. Just a heads up. Like, you're not charging me because your your materials are getting old and they need to be upgraded in order to work properly. Like, I'm not paying for that. And the guy was like, oh, you don't have to worry about paying for that. Look, listen, if I get that bill and I see any charge that they made me change my, my cable boxes and they're charging me for it, I'm gonna snap out. So he gets done and it's right, like almost right to the time that we need to leave to make it to, to the, the parent-teacher conferences because I tend to, to schedule them back-to-back. Back. So Maggie had parent-teacher, and they only have them for like 15-minute increments. Maggie had a 4, or a 4.30, 4.45 appointment, and then Orion had a 5 p.m. appointment. But typically, if you get there early, there's always parents that are late because of work or whatnot. 
So you can typically get in early. So Mr. Coffee just took Orion over at 445. I took Maggie to her two appointments, which her teachers typically are usually together. So we end up having like a 20, 30 minute like meeting about what's going on, right? So we get to the first teacher and she's kind of busy with whatever. She seems kind of irritated about life. And I'm like, she's not obviously having a good day. And she's like, yeah, due to the lockdown, there was all this stuff I have to do now that I wasn't able to do because I couldn't leave the school and blah. And I was like, okay, she seems irritated today. So then her, uh, she, another parent comes in as we're sitting there waiting to talk to the teacher. And they're like, we're late, but you know, we'll, we're here. And I'm thinking, wow. The fact that you thought you could just bust in here while she's already in the middle of talking to an adult, that that says a lot. Okay, and the teacher was like, are you going to be okay if I, if I talk to her real quick? She was right before you, but she's late. And I'm like, no, that's fine. I guess I'll go talk to the other teacher. I'm thinking, no problem. I'll just go talk to Maggie's other teacher, which is her main, because this was her, her special ed teacher. Um, so, like, I can just go talk to her main teacher. So we make our way upstairs to go talk to Maggie's main teacher who happened to just meet us outside of the door of the special ed teacher. And so she's like, you guys ready to come up? And I'm like, yeah, she has to take a meeting with another uh, parent because the parent was late. And she goes, okay. So we walk up the three flights, three flights of stairs. Y'all, my lungs are on fire. Look, I've been working out. Don't get me wrong. I've been working out. We've been doing a lot more walking and moving around because with Twitch and everything else, I sit still a lot of the time. And um, yeah, that weight will get you. Like it will sneak up on you. So I like to move around as much as I possibly can when I can. So I'm sitting there <laughs> and I'm like getting up these stairs. I, I feel, look, listen, listen, I feel really good about the fact that I was able to make it to the second flight of stairs before my lungs were like, ma'am, stop. No, you already know what this is about to happen. And I'm sitting there like going up the stairs. I'm sweating like a whore in church. Just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is it? Oh, God. Why are y'all so far up here? Oh, my God. Y'all expect kids in the law. <laughs> And her teacher's like laughing. She goes, I know, I remember, you love these stairs. I'm like, I hate it here. So finally, we make it to Maggie's classroom. We sit down and the teacher is telling me how much of a joy Maggie was to have in her class and everything. And her teacher absolutely loves her. And Maggie just adores her teacher. And the end of the year is coming up. So, okay, one of the reasons why Miss Coffee has been distant. I'm in the middle of teaching Maggie how to crochet. Maggie is 11 and she does have a learning disability, which is not really a learning disability. She, she's, she has a, uh, she's developmentally delayed. So Maggie, where she is 11, seems to have the brain of like a seven year old. So it's only just a few years delayed, but she still is delayed. One of the things Maggie wanted to do because she found out at her parent teacher conference that her teacher is retiring this year. Her teacher has been teaching for 40 years. And this class just took her out. And when she said this class, I was looking, I looked at Maggie and Maggie was like, not me, I'm quiet in class. And the teacher was like, yeah, no, Maggie was probably one of the best students I've had in a very long time. And I'm like, that makes me very happy to hear because I always am curious of how Maggie is at school. Just because when Maggie is home, she's a very feral human. Maggie cannot be cooped up for long periods of time. Does anyone else have kids like that? You can't coop them up for long periods of time because they get destructive and they just kind of, I don't know, they, they, they turn feral. So that's what we call Maggie the feral child. So Maggie was one of the best students in her class and she made student of the month or something like that for her class. And I was very proud of her. And I told her, you know, mommy's really proud of you, Tosa. You did really good at school. And she goes, I like school. And I just hope that throughout the rest of her career, she has teachers as nice as her, her main teacher this year. because And so far, she has. But this there's something about this teacher that really solidified for Maggie that, you know, she likes school. And so when the teacher said she was going to be retiring, when we got out of the meeting, Maggie said, Mommy, I want to make something nice for my teacher. 
I asked her what she wanted to make and she said she wanted to crochet her something warm because she's always saying about how she's cold. So I decided that we're going to teach Maggie how to make a scarf. So that's essentially what I've been doing. This is where I've been. So typically it's right after she gets out of school. She has a 30 minute crochet lesson where I teach her like basic crochet stuff. She's not doing too bad, which if you hang on a second, I can show you uh, kind of what she's working on. I was working on it and then I pulled it apart and had her work on it. And it actually isn't turning out too bad. She still has to work on her tension and stuff, but she's not doing too bad. Let me go grab it real quick. I can grab some more thread too. Hang on a second. All right. So here is the little piece that she's working on. And she's not doing too bad. Like I said, she needs to work on her tension a little bit, just a little bit. Um, but I was essentially helping and guiding her through doing this. So this is what she's gotten done so far. And this is just her practicing the stitch so she will work on this more as you know the weeks go on we have a couple more weeks until school is out I want to say we have six weeks seven weeks maybe I don't think it's a full two months um my kids get out of school pretty early in the year so it's like May is it May May or March no not March <laughs> It's May like 28th or something like they get out a little bit earlier than like normal students do so she wanted to make something special for her teacher. So that's what she had decided to make. I'm a little upset because my thread is a little bit faded. I think it's just because it was sitting on my table for so long. Turn it this way. It's a little bit faded. So it looks a little bit different than the original color, but it's the same color. So I'll have to figure something out with that, but yeah, so her teacher is retiring, but said that Maggie's doing very well in class. Uh, her top score, like her top subject right now is math, which isn't surprising because the kids tend to do like math. All three of my kids love math. Go figure. Um, they get that from their fathers uh, because I do not like math. <laughs> Question of the video, if you've gotten this far, what was your favorite subject in school? Like that one subject that every time it was time for that subject, you got so, so excited. Um, I think mine's was probably science. I loved science. And I'm going to say probably about a good 45% of that love for science came because of Bill Nye, the science guy. And if you don't remember back in the day when they would roll that TV card out into the room and you heard that Bill Nye, the science guy um, show came on. Look, listen, that was like the highlight of my school career is watching Bill Nye, the science guy. I freaking loved Bill Nye the Science Guy. And then they stopped playing it after so long because, like, he, I guess he stopped making episodes or it got canceled or something. I don't remember. But I loved watching Bill Nye the Science Guy. So uh, they don't do that, obviously, nowadays because, you know, there's probably other people that they could watch. But our, our person of the decade or whatever was Bill Nye the Science Guy. So Maggie's doing pretty well in her classes. So I was happy to hear that. And then we go down to special ed. Now, the special ed teacher, I don't know what the, t the, the parent and her were talking about. Whatever it was, was a heated conversation that caused the parent to get up and walk out. And I was like, oh, wow. OK. And the lady's like, yeah, today is not the day. And I'm like, oh, you know, that tells me right there already. She was probably going to be in a bad mood. So I was like, great. So I go and sit down and I'm like, you know, how is she doing? And I'm expecting to hear that she's doing great, seeing as how her other teacher says she was doing so well. And the lady goes, she's not doing good. And I was like, oh. And she said it just like that. She's not doing good. Now, Maggie's kind of walking around, like, you know, drawing on the, the dry erase board and stuff. And the lady's not saying anything to her. She's, you know, talking to me. And she's like, she is still having trouble with basic things. And I'm like, basic things? And she goes like... Like, differentiating the, the difference between a quarter nickel, dime, and penny. And I was like, okay. And she, what was the other thing? There was something else. She's like, she's still mixing up her letters where she will sometimes write them backwards. And I'm like, 
Yeah. Do you remember back when I asked, how do I go about getting her tested for dyslexia? And you told me she doesn't have dyslexia. She just needed to apply herself. I'm like, this was why. I'm like, she does that all the time. No matter how much I've corrected her, she keeps doing it. I'm like, I seriously think that she's dyslexic. And lady goes, I think she just needs to apply herself a little bit harder. So I'm going to recommend to you that she goes to summer school. And I'm thinking, great, summer school, because that's every child's dream is to go to summer school. Now, don't get me wrong. If she actually needs it, I wouldn't have a problem with it. And she does. She does very much need it. But remember, my kids get out of school in May on the 28th, right? So I asked the teacher, how long does summer school run? Now, summer school is usually, from what I remember, summer school only runs a few weeks, right? So it's not anything like, you know, too labor intensive or anything of the sort. Well, apparently the school district said, we got money this year. So she was telling me that summer school this year, why is that stuck? Oh, because I put it through another stitch. Hold on a second. So they were telling me that summer school this year runs from July or June 1st till like the end of August, right? Which essentially for us means the entire summer. She was like, it's like three to four hours a day. And I'm like, are you, are you serious? Sorry, I'm threading, I'm rethreading my needle, which is why you're not seeing me do anything. And I'm like, are you, are you serious? And she's like, yeah. And I think she really needs it. And I was like, like, I understand like she's in, and I was like, how is she getting, how is she doing with her reading? Though she's doing better, she still, you know, has trouble saying some of the words. And I'm like, is this trouble she had before the device was installed or trouble that she's had uh, all this time? Like, or is this a new development? And she's like, I don't really remember but she's having problems with TH words and WH words. And I'm like, is it because you use the roof of your mouth to say those words? And she was talking about consonant words and all this other stuff. And I had, when she said that, she completely lost me. Because I was like, what, what is even that? Like, hello, what is, what, is, what is that? So she's just going on about like how Maggie is not doing well at all. And that Maggie desperately needs summer school. And I'm thinking to myself, isn't this the same stuff that y'all are supposed to go over throughout the school year? Like, we've been working on this stuff at home because this is the stuff, the same stuff you told me throughout the school year that she needed help with. I'm like, why is it that she's still, like, and they're like, well, sometimes when children don't apply themselves, they don't retain the information. It seems like she's having a hard time retaining the information. I'm like, are you preventing, are you presenting it in a way that she would want to retain it? retain it i'm like if if, she, if you present it as much as the, in the same tone that you're talking to me right now i tuned you out 10 minutes ago when you got snappy and said that she desperately needed summer school i'm like so if you're presenting the information in that way i can completely understand why she tuned you out now i'm not expecting her to to talk to maggie in you know a way that makes her like a child or something like oh sweet little maggie pie you have to do it like i'm not expecting that but the lady clearly had an attitude while she was talking to me, and that had me irritated. Hold on. Um. All right, I got it started, so I wasn't struggling so much. But, um, yeah, so I was like, you know, if you're presenting it in the same way that you're presenting it to me, I would have tuned you out as well because you kind of came into this with an attitude and she was like, you know, of course I don't have an attitude. I'm just letting you know that your child needs more help. And I was like, but this seems like stuff that we were supposed to be helping her with throughout the school year. Why is it that you think the next three months is going to be so crucial that she's going to magically just understand what you're saying to her? Because her concern is next year, Maggie goes to Orion school, which is an advanced school, but they also have special help programs at Orion School for kids like Maggie that grandfather in and test into the school. So the school doesn't just allow uh, high IQs. They allow everyone. You have to, it's like a lottery, I guess, that they do. And if you have a student that 
is currently enrolled and they have siblings that are below them in grade, they get grandfathered in if they can pass the test to get into the school. So Maggie did pass that test. And so that's why I just assumed because the teacher hadn't contacted me or said anything different that I assumed she was doing okay to find out that she's now concerned for Maggie and that Maggie should attend summer school. Now, when she said that summer school lasted the entire summer, literally Maggie would have two days of summer where she wouldn't have school, um, minus the weekends, of course. Um, and then she'd go right back into school. So imagine your kid going to school. And I know they do that in some places. This is not some place. We do not here in the U.S. We do not have our children go to school all year round. She literally would not have a summer. And she would be going right back into school after maybe two days of her being off. And it's not a weekend. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to make these decisions on my own because I'm feeling myself getting irritated with this teacher. And I'm trying everything I possibly can not to like fuss because then when, before we got to the teacher's classroom, we stopped by the book fair because they, they, they very, uh, how do I say it? They very conveniently had the book fair start the day parent teacher conferences started, which is great because there's, you know, I like the book fair. So we go into the book fair and we buy a couple of things like some posters and some like little pointy sticks and she got a new journal and a new pen to write in because she's been liking to write a lot and it's helping her with her handwriting. So I'll buy her all the journals and stuff she wants because she has been using them to work on her handwriting and stuff. And she'll like write herself little notes or she'll write a note to me like when I'm streaming or something. And so uh, the teacher took notice that we had went to the book fair before we came to her class. And she goes, is that why you were late getting back? Cause you were going, to, you went to the book fair. I'm like, yeah, we did stop by the book fair. I apologize. It's just that it's on the third floor. So it only makes sense to stop by there since it's on the way down here. And she's like, I did notice that you also didn't pick up a single book. Now, when she made this comment, it took everything inside of me not to have a visceral reaction to lash out at this woman and cuss her out. Right. As a parent, especially a parent of a child that has recently got the hang of reading to the point where she can read on her own now without a whole lot of assistance, we've been working really hard, really hard with Maggie to get her to the point where she can read on her own and just every once in a while we'll need help with a word here or a word there. So to hear this teacher snap at me because I don't see a, a single book in the stuff that you you purchased from the book fair. One, who are you to tell me how I can spend my money on my child? One. Two, no, you don't see any books. But you also don't know us well enough to know that Maggie has an entire bookshelf in her room, thanks to the generosity of the folks here on this channel, that is filled with books for kids her age. That will probably take her until next year to even read not most, most of them. Because remember, she's just getting the hang of reading. So why would I then go to the book fair to buy her yet another book? And I'm like, we did get a book. And I showed her the book. And it's a recipe book, right? And it's, it's like a cookie recipe book. It's a really cute book. And what our plan was, the deal was that we had talked about before we even went to her class, was that every time Maggie completes a book, she gets to pick one recipe, one cookie recipe out of the recipe book. I will personally take her, not just order it online, nay nay, I will take her to the store, let her hand pick the ingredients for the cookies, and then her and daddy will bake the cookies uh, just for her and Orion. That's kind of the deal that I made with her whenever we went into the book fair. She agreed. So I was like, all right, let's do this. She already has a book that she is reading at home. It's one of her babysitter club books. And so I had to very nicely inform this teacher that she should probably mind her business as to why I didn't buy my child a book from the book fair. I'm like, you don't know what we have at home. You don't know what she's currently doing at home. You haven't asked once how she's doing at home with her reading or anything of the sort. I'm like, you haven't even started signing off on her papers, acknowledging the fact that she's been reading. So um, I wouldn't advise you comment on the fact or try to make me feel like a bad parent because I didn't buy my child a book from the book fair because you feel she should have nothing but books in her life and should have no joy. I'm like, I am going to talk to my husband about summer school and we will get back to you. And she's like, just please keep in mind that your daughter really needs this because she's not doing very well. 
Now take it, Maggie's standing right there, and I don't know how much of it she heard. Maggie's a very confident kid, right? Even for all the stuff that she's been through, she's a very confident kid. And to hear a teacher talk about my child this way, again, takes everything in my power not to snap out. Now, I don't think teachers are paid enough. I think they deserve more than what they get. But in the case of this particular teacher, no. I don't, I don't know, I do not agree. I was very irritated with this teacher at this point. I had not had a problem with this teacher before where she always came off as kind of snarky. This was the first time she flat out had an attitude with me and then made the comments about how I should be buying my daughter books instead of toys, which she didn't get toys. Again, she got a journal to practice her handwriting. She got a poster and then my point stick. So the point stick is like one of those little sticks with the little white glove hand on it and it's pointing. I buy one of those from the book fair every year for myself. The kids don't really care about them too much, but I buy one for myself every year from the book fair because when I was Maggie's age, we couldn't afford the book fair, okay? This is not something that my parents could afford. So I would always see those little pointy finger things and want one, and I would try to save my money up to buy one, but my money would get stolen by my siblings or my parents would take it. Because, you know, they're going to put it into that mysterious savings account that never, like, really existed. They just wanted to spend it on something else. Um, But I was never able to get one. So as an adult with children, whenever my kids have a book fair, they already know the first thing I'm going for is that little pointy finger stick thing. Now, I have quite a few of them. And so when she said that and she saw the little pointy finger thing in Maggie's hand, she assumed it was Maggie's. And so she just assumed that I was just out here buying my daughter toys, which again, it's my kid. I can do whatever I want with her. And so I had to quickly inform her, like I said, that she has books at home. She doesn't need any more books. She literally doesn't need any more books. What she needs is for this lady to mind her damn business. So I abruptly got up, told her I would talk to Mr. Coffee about summer school and left. Maggie seemed a little sad, so I could tell she had heard part of that conversation. And to hear somebody talk bad about you and you're so little, you can't defend yourself because it's considered rude or disrespectful. I can't imagine what was going through her head hearing her teacher, who she has so much fun with and talks to me about how much fun she has with her, saying that she doesn't do well and that she needs to go to summer school. And so the first question, of course, I get when we get in the car is, Mom, am I dumb? My child happened to ask me if she's dumb because her teacher couldn't bite her tongue and not say things so abruptly and bluntly like that your child severely needs help. I then have to explain to Maggie, no, Maggie, you're not dumb. I'm like, you learn different than everybody else, and that is fine. Mommy is the same way. I learn differently than everybody else. And she goes, well, I want to be smart like Orion. And I'm like, if we keep doing what we're doing, Tootsie, you will be as smart as Orion, if not smarter. The fact that this woman almost had me in tears trying to explain to my daughter that she's not dumb. I have never been so glad that she'll be going to a different school next year and having a different teacher because this teacher absolutely deserves to be fired. So we get home and Mr. Coffee gets home and he has this look on his face and I was like, oh God, was Orion done now? So he explains how Orion's parent teacher conference went Orion is doing great at school he's just had making more bad choices he's letting his friends uh his friends distract him in class and it's becoming concerning to the teacher and I'm like that's funny because it's not concerning enough for the teacher to move his seat but it's concerning enough for the teacher to come to us and let us know that it's concerning but they didn't let us know that you know, when I had already came up there to talk to the principal when all that stuff happened and he got in school suspension. But okay, now they're concerned that his friends are being a bad influence on him. So we sit Orion down and have a talk with him to find out, which while I was in the room with that lady uh, that was randomly put into the room with me, she let me know because she was asking like, you know, what do my kids want to do when they grow up? Because she's a principal, so of course she wants to know. And I explained her, and she wasn't the principal of Orion's school. She was a different principal. I think she was like an elementary school principal. And I explained to her that Orion wants to do social media. And she goes, oh, they have a great program for that at the the college, which, of course, he'll get for free when he graduates. 
And so if you didn't know, here in North Dakota, when your child graduates or completes, what, two or three years of high school here, they get to go to the state college for free. Which means my child, if he does this program, if he chooses to do this, and he still wants to do this when he gets older, um, he literally won't have any college debt because he gets to go for free for completing high school here. We're not moving out of North Dakota anytime soon because the way I will sit and struggle and complain about this weather all day for my children to be able to go to college for free. Yeah, no, I will. I will stay here and freeze to death. Okay. Just call me Miss Ice Coffee. Okay. So the parent teacher conference for Orion didn't go horrible. He had a couple of assignments that he needed to complete. One being a project that was due today, technically today, the day I'm recording this. Um, so he is probably right now in the middle of turning in that assignment. I'm trying to figure out what the hole is. Because I have this kind of sitting sideways. So so he had a, an assignment that's due today. And then two other assignments that he hadn't completed. Because he needed help on them and was too afraid to ask the teacher. And I'm like, is the teacher mean to you? And he's like, no, I just don't like talking to him. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, Orion, that's really not a good enough reason to not do your, your assignments. Uh, so I'm going to need you to go talk to your teacher and ask them about these assignments. So he finished up the, the two or three assignments that he was missing, which this meeting for Orion went a lot better than last time. But he is still doing really good at school and everything. And they were telling me that because of how well he's doing, minus him not turning in a few assignments, um, if he continues doing well in school, of course, uh, his opportunities will be so bright for whatever it is that he wants to do. Now, not every child that goes here takes advantage of the free college here. Some, some kids decide to go to better programs elsewhere and that's fine. Like they can go wherever they want to go. It's their, it's their life. It's their decision. My thing is, is that they have a gaming, like, uh, a, like a legit gaming, uh, course here at the high school is not just for like playing video games but it's also for testing video games it's for game development it teaches you how to make your own game and then they have one for social media so when she said they had one for social media i that perked my ears because i was like wait what you gotta think things change with the times so back when i went to school there was no such thing as social media and it social media didn't become a thing until like I graduated high school. So for him to have the opportunity to get a college degree in social media, I was like, wait, what? Y'all flabbergasted. When I told this child that he literally, because we had told him that there's no, there's no career in this. Like where I do this online for fun. I was like, there's no making money off of this. You can make decent money doing social media, but it's nothing that you can sustain life on because it's so inconsistent. Where you can be up one minute just as quickly as you were up, you can be down the next minute. And that's not using me as an example. That's just saying in general, social media is is finicky like that. Like you could say, like I could make one phrase on this video, it get out that I said this phrase and I will immediately be canceled and all the views that I used to have, gone. So... I'm thinking, you know, there's no future in this. There's no, like, degree that you can get. I lied. I lied. Because there very much is a degree that you can get in social media. And I was like, say word. So now Orion has taken it upon himself to decide that, you know, he's pretty sure this is what he wants to do. This in video gaming. Because that not only that, they have tournaments at the school and game club at the school here in North Dakota that he can get into that where they like do like gaming and tournaments and events and like challenges and stuff like that. And he got so super excited. So I was like, heck yeah. So I'm pretty sure we already know what Orion's going to school for when he graduates high school here in a few years, um, which is great because he'll still be close to home. And then Maggie, Maggie just wants to have a career where she sees blood. And I'm like, she wants to be in the medical field somewhere. I don't know where. Every generation has a person in the medical field. My generation is my sister Jasmine. Um, and our kids' generation will probably be Maggie because she's been wanting to be something that you can see blood for a long time. And where some of y'all might be like, oh, that's terrifying. No, she doesn't mean blood like she wants to murder people. She means blood as in like she wants to work in the medical field. Her grandfather 
works in the metal or worked in the medical field. Her auntie Jasmine works in the medical field, and uh, she thinks that it's it's really cool and fascinating what the body does. So she has been interested in working in what she calls a career that shows blood for quite some time. Um, so it's not shocking. Like I don't know what the the programs here are for that, but I know they do have some. Hold on a second. All right, sorry about that. I'm I'm expecting my leasing lady to show up with my new lease renewal. So I thought that was her, but it wasn't. Doesn't help that she also lives next door. So anyway, <laughs> so, you know, Orion's doing okay in school. He's doing great. Maggie, Mr. Coffey and I talked about the Maggie situation. I explained to him what happened. And Mr. Coffey usually has a pretty level head about these things, whereas sometimes, of course, I can be a little hot-headed. So I was just like... Okay, what do you think about this? And I explained to him what the teacher said. And Maggie was like, Daddy, I promise I'm not dumb. And Mr. Coffey had this look in his eyes like he immediately got irritated. And he goes, why does she think that? Who called her dumb? And I was like, nobody called her dumb. It think I think it was the way the teacher said that she needed severe help. Like... She's not learning anything. She hasn't learned a single thing since school started, and she severely needed help. And Maggie's like, but she tells me I do a good job in class. And I'm like, Tootsie, I'm sure you do do a great job in class. So Mr. Coffee immediately gets irritated, and he goes, so what does, she ex what does she want to do? Like, how is she supposed to be helping her since, you know, she is her teacher? And I was like, she suggests summer school. He goes, okay, so, you know, I don't, what's the problem? I'm like, okay, so I have a problem with it because summer school lasts from June 1st until like the 18th or 19th or something like that in August. He goes, oh, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, it lasts the entire summer, three to four hours a day. I want to say three to four times a week, maybe. So essentially taking her entire summer and putting her back in school and she doesn't get a break. Again, remember, Maggie's a very feral child. She needs the sunshine. She needs to run around outside and play. Okay, she has a lot of energy. And if she doesn't get it out, she gets destructive. Okay, that's not making it okay for her to do so. But just that's just my child. And nobody knows my child better than I do. So I explained this to Mr. Coffee, and he immediately goes, no. She's not doing that. We'll work twice as hard with her over the summer. No. I was like, I agree, but I wanted to make sure that I got your input because I know I can be hot-headed, and the way it was delivered to me, you would not have been able to sit in your chair long enough for that lady to complete any sentences. So then after the kids kind of went away, I explained to him how the lady was talking to me, and he was like, why would she say that in front of Maggie? I'm like, look, listen, she must have been having a bad day. That's still no excuse to talk about a child that way in front of them, especially when you spend the entire class time telling her that she's doing a great job. And then as soon as her parents are around going, your daughter's doing absolutely horrible in school. She needs to go to summer school all summer. So we decided that we are not sending Maggie to summer school. We are just going to work with her twice as hard here at the house. And so yesterday I'm sitting there at you know, making dinner and the lady messages me and she goes, have we made a decision on what we would like to do? I need to get these numbers into our district office. And I'm like, yes, we have. We have decided that we're not sending her to summer school. And she's like, you really should consider doing so because, you know, her grades and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, her grades have actually gone up since the last time we had parent teacher conference. So I'm not sure which grade you're referring to. But every one of her grades has gone up. So their their number system is how they grade stuff. They don't do like A, B, C, D anymore. Um, now it's one through one through three or one through four. Oh, sorry, I dropped my needle. I'm going to say it's like one through three or one through four. And of course, when your child first starts class, like when, my, when Maggie first started, she was in ones and twos. And it just tells you the proficiency you are, you have with that subject, right? So Maggie started off the school year with ones and twos and now is at threes for most of all of her stuff, except for like a few blips here with reading and stuff. And so I was like, we have decided to decline summer school. 
We will work with her twice as hard at home. We will buy workbooks. We'll do whatever we have to do. I will stop doing as much social media to help her. But just know she will be fine. She does not need summer school. Because there's a way to do this where your child doesn't have to spend their entire summer sitting at a desk, staring at a whiteboard, and somebody talk down to them about how to do something, right? And so I was like, we'll just, we'll, we'll do the, the work that should have been done during the school year, but apparently you couldn't be bothered to do your job. And then she comes back with, you know, ma'am, we try our best when we're in class, but sometimes things get derailed because of other students. I'm like, that is not my problem. My problem is how you talked to me that day when I came in to talk to you about her classes and the way you approached the situation and how you handled it. Very unprofessional of you, and especially to do that in front of her to the point where she had me answer the question of, is she stupid because of the way you, you, you talked about her? No wonder the parent in front of me walked out the way they did because if you talked to them any sort of way of how you talked to me and my kid that day, um, I probably should have walked out too. I'm like, but as my child's advocate and the only person that can really speak up for my kid, I do not think that it's great for her mental health for her to be sitting in a classroom for the entire school year. Sorry, I bumped you. I'm like, I don't feel like it's appropriate or good for her mental health for her to be sitting in a classroom for her summer, her summer break. You're trying to take her summer break from her and she deserves it for all the hard work she put in for this school year. So no, we will not be sending her to summer school with you. She's like, and as soon as I said mental health, she immediately changed course and was like, I completely understand. Um, I appreciate you, you know, getting back to me. I am going to send her home uh, by the end of the week with some practice stuff that she can do over the summer. That's really going to help her and the website that we use here in class. And if you ever need any help or if she wants tutoring with something, you can always just message me. And I'm thinking, why would I bother? Why, why would I bother messaging you when you don't barely seem like you want to teach her as it is with the way you have your attitude? So I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. And I just kind of left it at that. So Maggie, Maggie is doing fine. Maggie still needs help with reading and she's getting a lot better. The, pro the big problem is with the device in her mouth, she can't say the TH or CH words because you have to use the roof of your mouth. And I don't know if you've ever tried putting, like, say, try putting, to like, toothpaste, um, peanut butter at the roof of your mouth, like a big wad of it. And then try and saying, like, thistle or thesis. Trying to say those words when you have a piece of metal stuck to the top of your mouth. Uh, yeah, no, no. Especially when you already had speech, speech issues. Um, yeah, no, she's fine. So we will be working with Maggie a lot. So that means that streaming and videos and everything else, if I happen to skip out on a video, please understand it's not due to any other thing of the sort. I've been trying to keep it together mentally for like the past few months because I've been working so hard with her and getting the house prepared and getting everything just ready for our trip in June, getting mentally prepared to be out of the house for that long because that is not something I typically do. I'm never usually out of my house longer than a few hours. So uh, mentally, I've been like, you know, trying to cope with everything that's about to happen. And one of the ways I've been, I found to cope is like through my little video games I like to play. So like the Sims replays that you guys have been getting, I play a lot of Palea over on Twitch. I play it on my own a lot as well. And so I got a really nasty comment um, yesterday and the lady was commenting on the reel that I put up of one of the folks, because I told you guys I'm going to be highlighting the folks that participated in my art challenge for Black History Month. And so the lady commented on the reel and I don't know if she's talking about the reel. I don't know if she's talking about like the Sims replays. But she said that she loved my, my, my channel, but I could tell she hadn't watched my channel in a hot minute. Because if she had, she would have known, one, you're an adult. You can keep scrolling if you don't like something. Two, leaving nasty comments is going to get you nasty comments. Because I come at you, I'm one of those creatives that comes at you with the same energy you give me. So if you give me bad juju, I'm going to give you bad juju, okay? So she must have skipped that memo and decided that right on one of the artist highlights that she loves my channel, but lately with these cartoony 
videos, it turns her off and makes her not want to watch. To which I went, you are commenting on the Black History Month challenge that I issued that an artist submitted their artwork for. One, that comment, to me, the comment she left on that that reel, because it was a reel, it's not even a video. The comment she left on the reel was one, unnecessary and uncalled for. Two, if and when the artist sees that comment, they're going to get discouraged because one, that artist is a newer artist. And so now they get to watch some negative Nancy write unfavorable things about how they don't like that they're seeing something else that's not diamond painting or crafting. So that tells me right there that she hasn't watched quite a few of my videos in a while because I've been talking about being burnt out on crafting for quite some time now. So for someone who loves my channel so much, she obviously doesn't watch very often, okay? So I was just like, look, listen, listen, if you're talking about the video that you just commented on, this is a reel. This isn't even a video, one. Two, if you have a problem with me highlighting the artists that participated in the Black History Month and helping to raise black voices because that was a black artist that she was commenting on, um, which is hilarious because go figure, there were two dudes before that reel went up. So there was two other uh, videos that went up, one from my friend Veronda, one from my friend Kaiju, Brooklyn Kaiju, and then my friend Empty Belly Art was next. She com commented on Empty Belly Art, who was a new POC artist. And said that she didn't like all the cartoony stuff that I'm putting up lately, and it's turning her off. Well, guess what? The unsubscribe button is in the exact same place as the subscribe button is. I have a lot going on at home right now. Mentally, I think I'm handling it very well. I find times to do things that I enjoy and that bring me joy, which right now is video gaming on my little game. And playing Sims. And so um, we do have the Sims series that's going to be coming up soon. My editor is taking a little bit longer than expected to get through some of the reels that uh, we have to edit. Um, so that's the reason why it didn't start when I wanted it to start. Hold on. I got it like a snag somewhere. Where are you snagging at? Oh, there it is. It just kind of twisted a little bit. So if with with everything that I have going on, I'm trying to still keep putting out content, even though even the, the, the drive to put up videos is getting harder and harder, especially when I see comments like that. So I'm going to keep putting up what I want on my channel. And for anyone who has an issue with it, there's two options. One. You could scroll past it if you don't like it. You don't have to leave a comment saying that it's not your tea. You don't have to leave a comment saying that this isn't something that you're interested in. Um, and, unless I ask for your opinion, it is not necessarily like something that I, I'm looking for, to be completely honest. And that's not me being rude. That's me protecting my mental health from having a thousand. Because remember, that number on my channel is very large. So to have that many opinions coming at me is a lot. Imagine working really hard on something or doing something to have 50,000 people tell you that they don't like it, it's not their cup of tea, okay? Imagine yourself in my shoes before making comments because you never know where somebody's mental health is and which is why I tell you guys to try to be kind to others because you never know what somebody else is going through. You don't know what other people are going through. I am not a robot, I'm a real person. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a daughter. And so when people leave comments like that, it really does bother me as much as I like to say that I ignore it. For the most part, I do, but it still does bother me a lot that people still are out here wanting to be keyboard warriors because they would never bother to say this stuff to my face. But they want to be keyboard warriors and tell me how much they just don't like something. That's fine if you don't like it. You don't have to watch it. I'm not forcing you to watch it. I just put up a video on my channel. If you choose to watch it, feel free to do so. Currently right now, yet again, for those who missed it, I am burnt out on crafting. I am burnt out on creating videos and content for my channel. So I'm trying to do the best that I can. It might be the bare minimum, but just think of it like this. The bare minimum that you guys are getting, you can either A, come over to Twitch where I stream four to five days a week, or B, think of it that I'm spending time with my kids because my kids are getting older. I'm realizing that my kids are getting older and I don't have much time before I don't get hugs every day from my kids. I don't get to see my kids every day. They're getting older. They're having and making friends. They're hanging out with their friends. 
and they're growing up. You guys have watched my kids on this channel grow up for the last, oh my gosh, um, what? We've been here six years in June? Not June, September. It'll be six years in September on Maggie's birthday that we've been here on YouTube, and I've loved every minute of it. There are times where I just want to rip my edges out and eat them, but for the most part, it's been nothing but love on YouTube, and I really appreciate you for those of you who who are giving me the space and time that I need to kind of get my life in order because with the kids growing up and everything else, mentally, it does take a toll on you as a parent. If you're not a parent, you probably wouldn't understand, and that's not a jab at you. That's just saying you won't understand. So as a parent of three children that are all growing up, when they're close in age like that, you start to think of the other kids. So like right now, I have my oldest child. Sorry, I'm untangling my thread. Right now, my oldest child is about to graduate high school. I then have my middle child who is going into eighth grade. And then my youngest who is going into sixth grade. And where I still have that time with my youngins, I also have a new person that's going to be living in my house uh, coming in July. And so, like, mentally preparing myself for my children getting older, taking care and helping and, and sheltering my one of my sister's kids to help him out and get him out of a bad situation. Um, there's a lot going on back here. So whenever I don't put up videos or I put up a replay from Twitch, I promise you it's not me just being lazy. I promise you it's due to mental health and it's due to the fact that that's all I have. That's all the spoons I have to give, but at least I'm trying to give you something. I'm not trying to give up on YouTube as I have a goal to hit 50K. Technically, once I hit 50K, my goal will be to hit 100K. But right now, I'm happy to get try to get to 50K. I am a mother that's just going through a lot right now, trying to get and keep her house settled and everything else. Because first and foremost, before I am Miss Coffee, I'm just somebody's mom. I'm just somebody's wife. My, my husband does not care that I'm Miss Coffee on YouTube because Miss Coffee doesn't make his dinner at night. I do. Miss Coffee doesn't give him conversation. I do. So where he does care about my career online, obviously, he doesn't care in the aspect of, oh, well, you didn't put a video up today. Why not? Like, shouldn't you be? That part doesn't bother him because he knows I'm going through a lot as a stay-at-home mom because where it might seem like a glamorous life, it's not because it gives you a lot of time to think about how your children are getting older and going to be leaving the house soon. And a lot of you folks that are empty nesters would understand this a lot. So... I just ask for grace and give me a little bit of time and I'm finally starting to get into the groove and being okay with the kids getting older and everything else, but I'm still a little burnt out on making content and stuff. So again, if I make something and put it up here as a replay from Twitch or you don't get a video that week, notice I said that week, I promise you there it's just, I, I don't have the spoons for it. We all get like that with work and where you get to take days off. I don't typically do because it messes with my paycheck, just like it messes with your paycheck. So I try not to take many days off. I try to stay as consistent as I can on YouTube. Um, but sometimes it's not always feasible for me to do so. So I can't, but feel free if you ever want to catch Miss Coffee, because I see a lot of folks saying that they miss Miss Coffee, Twitch is a free app. Um, you only have to pay for subscriptions if you want them. If not, that's fine. You don't have to pay for subscriptions. They have other ways for you to get uh, subscriptions over on Twitch, whether somebody gifts you a sub or you use Prime. You can get a free subscription. We have a lot of fun over there. You get to meet a lot of new, awesome creatives. I can't tell you how many coffee beans I've taken over to Twitch that don't even watch me anymore because they found new folks to watch. And it doesn't make me mad in the least bit. I'm glad that they found their crafty circles over on Twitch. So I'm on Twitch. I have Patreon. Patreons can tell you that I keep the content coming every week. It's a little chaotic, but I keep it coming. Um, I, I still go live once a month for my, my Patreon VIPs. So there's other avenues to catch me besides just YouTube. And so if you really want to catch me or you really miss me that much, feel free to catch me on another social media platform. Um, but because that's right now, live streaming is all I have the spoons for. 
It's a lot simpler. I don't have to answer comments afterwards. I don't have to worry about people being nasty in the comment section. So yeah, that's that's all I have the spoons for right now. So huh, that's been how last week went. Easter went pretty well. Um, we did get to dye a few eggs and hide them. We did lose quite a few of them. So we did end up letting the ferrets loose and um, letting them find the eggs for us. And they did. They found four of the eggs that we lost. One of them I don't even remember hiding. Um, nobody remembered coloring the egg. And we're like, wait, how long has this egg been there? Because it doesn't smell like, it doesn't smell bad. But also nobody remembered the egg. <laughs> So, um, luckily we had the fairs to help us out with that, but Easter went very well and we got to work on a project that Maggie had to do, which was to make a, take a bottle or a canister and make one of your favorite celebrities and then give us, you're supposed to give them 10, um, 10 facts about your celebrity so that people can guess who it is. So of course, Maggie being Maggie, we decided to make Wednesday Adams. So we made Wednesday Adams out of one of Mr. T Coffee's tea jugs. And she gave her 10 facts and presented it to her class yesterday. And her teacher was so proud of her because she did such a great job. And that the canister, look, I'm not even going to lie. That canister was fire. Okay. We use like most of the kids use like construction paper. Problem was our Walmart was out of construction paper. And I was like, oh, snap. So instead of using construction paper, we use vinyl. <laughs> We use vinyl, and I was like, hey, this, this project is fire. I wish I would have taken a picture of it, though, but I was so excited to, to, like, work on it and do these other crafty things with Maggie that I didn't even think about taking a picture of it. So, yeah, so that's that's where I've been. That's what I've been up to, teaching Maggie to crochet and getting her, trying to get her into other crafty things that can keep her hands and mind busy when she is stuck in the house, um, helping her to finish or finish helping her to build up on her reading skills and her language skills and trying to get her caught up to where she should be like academically to the other students in her class um I'm just out here being a mom I'm out here being a mom and so again if you miss me or you know you really want to see more content from me there are other platforms that I'm on YouTube isn't the only one feel free to come see me on one of the other platforms um, or if not, like I said, I'm not abandoning YouTube. I'm just going to be cutting back on it. And I think I've already showed you this week that we've been cutting back on content. Um, well, you'll see, cause there's no other video going up this week besides like a sneak peek later on this week. But essentially this is how the channel is going to be for like a little bit until, uh, the gist of summer and all this other stuff. So yeah, but that is where I'm going to end it for today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and continue to do so. Um, I am going to get ready to go take the kids to the dentist because it is about that time. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you got this far in the video, show me the third emoji in your phone. Let's, let's do that. Let's see how many people just follow along to what you did versus who actually got to this part of the video. So, put in the third. Em no, 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 no. Yeah, put in the third emoji from your phone. So with that said, I must now bid you adieu. We did get quite a bit done. So we did get this part done and then some of the parts of the hands. So I thank you guys so much for watching. Please keep in mind to be kind to others because you never know what somebody else is going through. Be courteous because it's the right thing to do and always stay cool. And whether I see you on YouTube land or I see you on Twitch or maybe even Patreon, either way, I'll see you when I see you. Bye, guys.